So you guys think that in Brazil you can walk shirtless everywhere you go? No. The guy over there just stopped us. We came here to do a few groceries and he said, you have to put your shirt on. So tourists have to wear a shirt in Brazil as well. So one of the things that I love the most about the USA is that I can buy frozen vegetables whenever I go. However, in Brazil, I mean, it's kind of better, right? You can only find fresh vegetables, which means that the lazy dude here has to cut and season all of this if I want to eat my veggies. Portobello mushrooms, one of my favorites. I always try to include this in my diet and eat as much as I can. It's a pretty good source of uh, fiber, almost no carbs really, and it's really good for your hunger. So if you want to feel more filled in terms of food, you're in a diet, mushrooms. Ironically, everyone thinks that bodybuilders always eat, you know, or drink a lot of eggs and egg whites. And unfortunately, this is a session that I do not have access to. I took a, a food sensitivity test a few years ago and whey protein, milk and egg whites were my absolute highest numbers in terms of allergies, which means this is a no, 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 no. I cannot drink or take or eat any egg white at all. Uh, you know what? I actually stand corrected. Brazil does have frozen vegetables. Yes, score. One of the main differences between Brazil and the U.S. is that their seasonings are definitely... I mean, we have way less options here, for sure. There's no Mrs. Dash. I'm pretty much gonna stick to the basics. They're all a little bit too much salt. Um, I'll definitely choose, you know, some Himalayan salt, black pepper, uh, garlic, basil, Usually these simple herbs that just enhance the flavor of the meat is what I usually prefer rather than, you know, processed, highly salty uh, seasonings. That's not what I would recommend. This is a no, no, no. Stick to the basics. It is pretty expensive to live here as a Brazilian. You know, this meat costs 33 reais, which converts to more or less six dollars which would take somebody who works a minimum wage in the u.s what half an hour to earn right however the same person in brazil would need an entire day of work to be able to afford half a kilo of meat so it's definitely very complicated for someone who's a bodybuilder and wants to train in a lot of protein to afford this type of lifestyle so whenever i travel this is probably my biggest dilemma you know we get really really spoiled uh, in the US if I go to Europe if I came to come to Brazil this is the kind of size we get this is the biggest size of oatmeal so I just have to like buy you know, a lot a lot for my trip <laughs> so I think we're pretty much done here at the grocery store I bought a few things to you know eat for the next three or four days. This entire cart is for like three or four days max. Uh, as you can see, you know, good source of carbs like potatoes. Uh, I eat a lot of fruit, so a bunch of fruit. Uh, broccoli, vegetables over there. Um, you know, I just bought a, I just buy a bunch of these bags and boil it and cook it so I can get my veggies. Um, oatmeal, also pretty good and very very consistent in my diet I eat oatmeal every single day um, and of course meat and water lots of water I drink usually on average six liters a day so I need a lot of water to survive So of 
course, the bodybuilder's kitchen is always very busy. Already here making some rice for the week. We also have a lot of beef here as well. It's cooking and here on the sink, we're gonna start also boiling some potatoes. So as you can see, my diet is very simple. I just really eat a lot of meat, a good source of carbs, and then a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, a lot of fiber. So now we're gonna just let this all cooked so we don't have to stress about food for the next days. So if you guys think that every bodybuilder has this luxurious life where they never ever cook, they have all the meat, you know, meals ready for them, check this out. I cook everything I eat. Meal prep services? Mm -mm, not really. So you kind of have to live and love this lifestyle. It's really not that easy. But you know what? It's all a matter of being smart. So I usually step in my kitchen, I would say, once or twice a week max because I also have you know a lot of clients who uh, coach and I have a lot of content to put together so I just don't have the time right so I usually cook in a big batch I would say once a week sometimes twice a week I leave everything ready in the fridge you know, all of my meat all of my vegetables and then I just eat as I need and I would say for you guys who never you know never did meal prep or anything like that that's the way to do it just do once a week big batch and then you have everything ready for you and you don't have to stress about food time to eat let's do this so this is more or less what i normally eat we're doing a very light clean bulking which means I'm increasing the calories very gradually to control the body fat percentage um, I had surgery a couple of months ago which means I was pretty much not eating well for I would say six months or so because I couldn't train properly so now I, I all I could do was just really try to maintain my butt, uh, my muscle mass and lean down in the meantime so now that I'm out of the woods carbs are back in my life so I'm very happy that I can eat carbs. So I'm pretty much eating around 200 grams of rice with every meal. Um, let's check here on the scale. A little bit more. Yep. And then 150 grams of meat and that could be either chicken or ground beef or tilapia or salmon uh, all of these options are pretty good options um, and then vegetables as well so I eat a lot of vegetables usually around 200 grams of vegetables with every meal and I eat fruits as well usually 100 grams of pineapple or 100 grams of strawberries, I put a lot of water, just make it a big shake to drink tons of water every day. So after you know all this work, I need and crave some leisure and social time as well. Uh, everybody knows that COVID pretty much left everyone, you know, isolated from their families, their loved ones. And same happened with me. I could not come to Brazil for almost, I mean, over two years, really. And because of that, I could not come to see my best friends or even my family. And today's a very special day because I got to actually invite all of my friends to come over tonight. And they're actually in town, which is also really rare. You know, some of them don't even live here. They live in Sao Paulo. So I'm actually super excited because I'm gonna see them after three very, very long years, and I can't wait to, to spend some time with them.
about nightlife, right? And tonight, I'm gonna show you where Samba was created. We're here in the downtown port zone of Rio. Uh, we're gonna take you guys to Pedro do Sal. And this place is very, very special because this is where all the Africans came to Brazil, you know, for the slave trading and all of that. And also the Africans from Bahia founded community here. And that's when the samba was created, the rhythm that, of course, is not, you know, everywhere in the world. And just check this out. Architecture is pretty incredible. You know, it's just full of very charming historical colonial buildings. But of course, I'm excited to show you how we body here. ways to describe Rio is how democratic the city is. So we're here at Pedro do Sal, like I said. It's where Samba was born, you know, years and years ago. And check this out. It's just a major party, free of charge. Everyone can just come here, party, and everyone is together. Families, girls, women, men, gays. It's just a big party. And this is exactly what Rio is about. Hey, what's up guys? So it's 2.30 a.m. here in Rio. We're back home. As you guys saw, we went out for, you know, Friday night. It is possible, you know, to have some social life and be a bodybuilder. I went out with my friends, so I had a great time. However, here I am doing my, you know, duties as a bodybuilder, which is always making sure that my body is well fed and never in a catabolic state. So this is one of my favorite recipes. It's my last meal of the day. It's a protein pudding. It's basically cream of rice, peanut butter, blueberries, and a protein powder. I just microwave it. It's super easy and it's freaking delicious. So um, this is a tip for all of you. If you ever go out, if you go potting, if you go to a bar, a restaurant, whatever, when you come back home, always make sure to have a meal never go to bed on an empty stomach because that's when you grill that's when your body release hormones that are anabolic and will make your body grill even more so this meal is extremely important to guarantee that you know in half an hour from now when i'm passed out in bed i'm gonna be you know making progress <laughs> 